Joining me in studio is Paul Stone. He's the CEO of Colonial Metals Group. We uh, are going to try and tackle some of your questions uh, on issues related to the economy at 646-720-0635. I did tell Paul off the air a minute ago that we would only take questions if they're good, if they're intelligent. So E. Frank need not apply. If you're slightly above the level of E. Frank, We'll tackle, we'll tackle your questions. Paul, you mentioned the Federal Reserve before in a critical manner, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think this is something that is so fascinating in that the Fed has so much influence over people's lives, so much impact on our everyday lives. Most people honestly couldn't tell you what the Federal Reserve does. How do you view uh, the job the Federal Reserve is doing these days managing the economy? Well, this might sound a little out of left field, but if you kind of think about putting a committee in charge to manage the weather, you really think that would go well? Mm-hmm. We, some get, some folks would do a better job managing the <laughs> I weather. Don't. Okay. Well, that, so if you think of an economy, it has cycles to it, right? And it's also affected by weather and seasons. There's a seasonality to things. And so if you start thinking about, we have a committee that manages our financial weather, they get it wrong a lot. Um, there was a, a world where humans lived in alignment with life, if you think about it that way, up until 1913. Did we ask for there to be a Federal Reserve? Were we hoping that a group of people would manage our financial weather and kind of create a little bubble for ourselves to be immune to the steep drops and the steep climbs and the unpredictability that Mother Nature could bring us from time to time? No, we didn't ask for that. So I think the job they're doing is a guessing game where they're also stumbling through one day at a time as things come at them. But how could they not foresee the massive deficit in, 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 uh, you know, bank integrity back in 2008? How could they not foresee that? How did that take them, catch them off guard? There have been times in American history, as you know, probably a lot better than me, where we've done away with a central bank. Uh, the Andrew Jackson obviously hated central banks and the idea of central banks. And one of the things that uh, conventional economic historians always say is that the getting rid of that central bank was a bad thing for the American economy. Now, I love contrary views of history and, you know, a revisionist history. And I mean that in the best sense. Do you think there is a role to be played for a central bank in this country or should we have no central bank whatsoever? Well, I think, you know, from the framers uh, who, who put the country together and put it on paper, they came from a mentality and an experience of what monarchies are like. So they were willing to risk their lives and sail on wooden ships across the Atlantic and, and maybe even get a disease when they got here in Paris and and never get to experience what the American experience, uh, you know, the science project of America actually could become. So if you're looking at them saying that a federal government shouldn't be more powerful than the states, there's a reason they're trying to Mm -hmm. keep away from power centralizing somewhere. And when you look at the massive authority that the federal reserve offers, it's oppressive. And, we're, and, and we don't seem to be clients of the Federal Reserve. It seems to be government need and massive corporations here and around the world and moving money around the world, which doesn't ever seem to benefit the individual, right? I don't remember a time where I could think back in any of the stuff that I've read and studied or what older folks have shared with me that they were just throwing a parade down Main Street because of the incredible policy that came out of the Federal Reserve that benefited actual people. So uh, my answer would be a very small, somewhat of an advisory board, perhaps. But think again, if interest rates are allowed to set themselves during an economy before leaving uh, 1912 and 1913, and now they're choosing how to manipulate and manage interest rates and the flow of money, it does. It seem it seems to have created a lot of money with thirty five trillion dollars in debt, but it certainly hasn't created more freedom. 